Hi, this is Stephen Paul West and welcome to I Found Something Beautiful. Today I'm going to talk about the individuality of artists and how important that is. And I'm going to take an interesting topic, uh, which is old barns. Now I've always been fascinated by old barns, uh, and I don't think I'm alone. I mean, I see them in paintings, I see them in pictures. There's a certain kind of nostalgia there, there's a mystery there. Uh, when you take a look at an old barn that has, uh, and I've been inside of barns where they actually have wooden pegs holding everything together, which means they didn't have access to nails. And I've seen blacksmith nails and all kinds of things. Right here in Americana, it's kind of like our connectivity to the past. And uh, later on, I'm going to go visit with somebody in Kentucky who has a, uh, a, a tobacco barn that was, it looks like it's a thousand years old. It's buried inside some woods. You can hardly notice it at all. But I'll actually talk to the gentleman that lived there and uh, was a little boy when this tobacco farm was productive and, and how different the world has become. But <clears throat> one thing I've noticed about barns is they all reflect the individuality of the farmer that needed the barn. Now, uh, in today's society, I was down uh, in New Braunfels, which is a German community, and I was at a uh, Wurstfest, which is a celebration of the ethnicity of the German peoples down there. And so I, I, I go down to New Braunfels with a buddy of mine, and we go to the Wurstfest, and when we get out, we notice that uh, there's a Wendy's there, and there's a Logan, and <clears throat> the city looks like um, every other city in America. And all of the uniqueness that was once America is slowly being displaced by the efficiency of corporations. And of course it's comforting for all of us to go into a, a Logan's or a, a, a McDonald's or a Wendy's or whatever. We know exactly what we're going to get here and what we're going to get there and what we're going to get there. But the problem is the unique flavor, the unique identity that is that community has vanished. And when you go and visit old barns, that farmer not only had to be a productive farmer, but when it came to time to build a barn, he didn't have the internet to go to. He didn't have anything other than the resources in that area. The, the lumber mill that would have been in the river, the wood that they had available, the experience of the other carpenters in the area, or maybe nobody at all. And so you end up with these barns with all these unique flavors and, and different art and, and different expressions and different lofts and different modes. And you close your eyes and it turns around. It won't be long till this place will just be a memory. Well, nobody will know that barn was here. Like I say, you could go 100 yards into this forest and not know what's there. I mean, somebody had to cut this wood and plane the wood and bring the wood and make the nails, put it all up. Well, those are machine-made nails, so this thing was built in the, what, 1930s, Ron? I mean, I don't, the nails aren't Smith, so... This is a bit of Americana here. Cattle were brought in and then children would push the grain down from the from the loft up above. But making a family farm work like this is a lot of hard work. Look at that center beam there, Ron. That snapped clear in half. Yep, clear in half. You go in there, you get hurt. Like you said, a big wind will come up or a butterfly will land on it. And Damon Jean may not even hear it come down. Or it may do what it's doing now and just go slowly kind of <laughs> yeah, just fall over. Lean over and lean over and lean over. It'll take 30 years to just kind of get down. You remember when this tree was just a sapling, Ron? I go take a walk in the big woods up there in Michigan, and I remember if the tree was twisted and along a trail, I remember when it was, you know, not not a sapling, but when it was right. just a tree, small tree. I don't think that tree was even here. Yeah. Because I remember this was a, like a corral back here. This is all pinned in. And uh, it was like, this is where the cows were. And the, the hogs... We're over there by the kitchen door. And there ain't... Yeah! Alright! That's Kentucky right there calling us to dinner. Well, there you go. The Kentucky barn. Uh, I remember going to my Uncle Lloyd's farm when I was a kid. And he had a huge dairy farm. Uh, two stories high. And 
couple of different lofts and there was this big hoist in the middle that we kids would grab a hold of and we would swing from one end of the building to another and it would slide on rails across the top and interestingly enough the rails didn't meet at the top because they were made of wood uh, and of course it would drop out down the middle and then you'd have to roll out of the way before the tackle would hit you on the head and then somebody would have to climb up the wooden ladder on the side of the uh, barn and put the tackle back up and it was really dangerous <laughs> But uh, that was an interesting flavor of America, and um, I find that that has spilled over into my uh, artwork, like uh, one of my particular works here called Dusty Old Barn. It's a vintage print, and I actually use a lot of different components to composite up and make this image um, from what my memory would be. Uh, back when kids would go out with their dad in the early morning hours and, and watch their father set the animals and, and milk the cows and move the grain and the, the sound of the mice scratching along the floor, I, I put all of that into this print and it's an expression of my individuality. And uh, just as these old barns have a unique flavor that represent what was going on in, in their world at that time. And, uh, when we visit with the uh, gentleman from Kentucky, he expressed what it was like to be a kid. But there was even things there that he didn't know. A pile of bricks and uh, different beams and how fast nature had taken back over. Now, we can as artists all go online and find a famous artist, Picasso or Rembrandt or whoever. And we could duplicate that person's art expression, Monet. But... We have to remember that when they originally do their work, it was from a, a point of individuality. There wasn't that many Monets in the world. He was one of the first people to be an expressive artist. And uh, the difference between Western art, where the brush was for painting and, and a pen was for writing, versus Eastern art, where the brush was for writing and for painting. You could see that these different individualities, these different modalities are expressed artistically. So when you go out and you visit on the internet and you find something that's really cool, uh, it's great to be able to duplicate that because you developed a skill. But the true moment of art will occur when you can use that and you can create your own individual expression of that. Um, once when I was in New Orleans, I went and I visited an, an art festival and it was more of an arts craft kind of a festival. and. Um, <clears throat> I was with a friend and, and she stood in front of a booth and I just wanted a picture of her and I took a picture and the vendor came out of the booth all angry that I was stealing their art with my photography and, and to be honest their art was just a duplicate of other things that were already in existence in New Orleans. They, it wasn't any, a unique expression of their art and therefore um, they were overly aggressive about what I was taking from them and, and I gotta believe that that was partly guilt on their part for just lifting images from around in the city. A true artist is able to uh, control their art through their own individuality. That is something that nobody can farm out from you. Uh, people can imitate a Jackson Pollock but when you break it down you actually see a real Jackson Pollock with your own eyes you can see the quality is different. There's something going on, a personal self-expression that was built into that. And uh, when you revisit these old barns, and I, I really hope you do, when I drive along the side of the road and I see one of them uh, half propped up and nearly falling down, I like to pull over and take a shot of it. It's the nostalgia of the old barn. And, and think about the person that built that and how the individual farmer, his first call was to be a farmer. But when the world called upon him to create a barn, he built the barn with whatever he had. The materials of the air area, the uh, intellectual capacity of the area, and he built a functional barn. Um, and I like that. And when I find somebody's art who, who has borrowed components and knowledge and techniques from various artists, but they still impress their own individuality. And I know in my wedding prints, uh, there is a lot of unique individuality. And I'm not primarily a wedding photographer. I'm, I'm a fine art photographer. But I look for those compositions that have B kind of camera work. Uh, that are a little bit different from other people's. And uh, this compositing of this uh, dusty old barn I did, this vintage print, it had a lot to do with what I remembered as a child, of being out with my father in our barn, which also had all kinds of interesting um, shelves and levels and hiding spots. And, and it was just a unique expression of Americana. And I encourage you today, if you 
not in a rural setting. <laughs> Leave the urban environment, drive out and see if you could find an old barn. Now they're all getting replaced by these ready-made uh, pole barns with these slap-up metal sidings. And that's kind of sad. And, and the cheap clapboard wood that goes over it, the classic uh, red barn look. But um, drive out far enough and you should be able to find something that's still unique. This is Stephen Paul West. And I want to thank you for watching the show. And today's uh, show was brought to you by Dusty Old Barn. All my prints are limited edition, limited to 100. This print comes in several different sizes, and they all follow the uh, golden ratio. These are beautiful pieces of art, very stunning. I use a special process uh, on my prints, so they really jump out from the wall. And I can't do them justice here uh, in this presentation. But if you would like a nice fine art print that's framed, it's an artist proof, and I've signed it, uh, click the link below and you can follow my link uh, to make that purchase and I want to thank you for uh, watching the show and this is Stephen Paul West of I found something beautiful